This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to take this antenna, some hard line off of this spool, a little bit of rope and some climbing ingenuity, and we're going to install the latest repeater at the main repeater site. That's what's coming up next, this week on El Cara Ham Radio. Well, we all headed up to our main repeater site, which we call the 88 Repeater. And uh, Thomas and Laura met us up at the repeater with their truck and trailer, and they had already unloaded the spool of hardline, the antenna, and some of their ropes and so forth for installation. And there's the tower as it sits before we install this new-to-us DMR repeater. Now, AC4DM can help himself. He's got to go ahead and put a new hole in our uh, uh, shack here. So he is creating uh, what is essentially a fitting, maybe not a fitting, but a, a pass-through for the hard line that's going to come off of the tower and into the shack and eventually will connect to the repeater. So we're taking some of this PVC. We're going to cut it to size. We're going to have a collar on each side so that it doesn't move. And then we'll have our piece that we need. And Don's going to pull out his trusty pocket knife and clean it up a little bit. And Don's going to. You can see it's it already got a collar on one end, and then we have another piece that we'll glue in once we stick it through the wall. KD6 FTR got to work with some tools in his hand. We had a rack over here, uh, and uh, we've got some space in it. We had to remove some older equipment, and we said, well, this is where we're going to put this new DMR repeater. Again, new to us. So we needed to shift some of the items down and take some things out. This shelf was being used for the other equipment. We're going to pull that out. And now we're taking this termination panel and moving it down. This is where the DC power is supplied to many of the different uh, items that are installed in this particular rack. So we're going to shift this all the way down to the lower portion, which is basically resting on the metal plate there that hides the IOTA power supply and uh, any DC connections. So now we start putting some screws back into the rack so that we can basically anchor this in place. Get right up on it. Screws line right up. So it's almost like it was made to be that almost. way. Almost. Intended it to be that way, didn't you think? Now you can see that we've got a nice gap there for the different pieces of equipment that we're going to install for the DMR repeater. We're going to have duplexers, we're going to have an amplifier, and then we're going to have a Motorola repeater. Now, this is where Thomas got up on the tower. Now, Thomas is another professional climber who uh, is taking DMR for the state of Kentucky onto his shoulders, and he's been asking various clubs within uh, the, the state of Kentucky if he could use some of their tower space for putting up these DMR repeaters to create uh, what is essentially an entirely linked uh, repeater uh, system or ecosystem. So we had, to, we had to take down some older antennas that were no longer being used uh, for a different project. And so he was nice enough to climb the tower and pull those uh, two antennas. Here we're showing the longer of the two uh, down from the, uh, the tower and also removing, removing the cabling connected to both of those antennas. As you could tell, it was a nice, beautiful blue sky and uh, very little wind. So now that he's got the two older antennas off of the tower, plus the cabling, Miss Laura was going to help out with the, uh, the rope, and we're going to start um, uh, taking some things up to Thomas up on the tower. You can see he's got one of the antennas hanging off of his, uh, one of his lanyards, I guess, and then he's still working on that longer one. And now he's back down on the ground, and KD6FTR is starting to clean up some of the cabling that came with those two antennas. It's a little bit cool that day, but with the sunshine, it really helped out, so it wasn't too, uh, too cold. And again, the wind was uh, not too bad this day. 
Now Miss Laura is going to start hoisting this uh, antenna mount up to uh, Thomas. Now Thomas, you can see there's on the ground, so we're just getting things in place ready to go for when he climbs the tower. And up he went again. I think he was up and down that tower at least three times this day. So Mike and Laura were working together to attach the antenna. Now this is a long antenna. This is the longest antenna that we've ever installed on this particular tower. And uh, I'd say it's a good 15 feet long, maybe a little bit longer. You can see the doublets hanging off of it and uh, uh, in different uh, uh, orientations. You've got some facing one way and some facing another. So you get a nice 360 degree uh, ability to not only receive, but to also transmit. So we're getting this antenna prep, uh, prepped and ready to go up. I was in California, so you ready? Yeah. You want to help out here? <laughs> and up we go. Now remember, Thomas is already up there, and you can also okay. see yeah. that so uh, I missed uh, catching this, but the hard line we've also already sent up to Thomas. So you can see some of that hard line just hanging there going up the tower. Now we're going to uh, send to Thomas the antenna. The Now this is where having multiple people is really a boon for these kinds of activities. And of course we had more people than we needed, but again, Laura and Thomas do this for a living. This is something that uh, they get paid to do. This is uh, a, a, a hobby installation, but uh, they're used to working to together. They know each other's uh, needs and uh, almost through sign language, it seems like, or body language, they know what the other one needs. Now Thomas has got the antenna uh, about as high as he needs it, but obviously it needs to go a little bit higher to uh, fit into and ultimately sit into the, uh, the mount that he's already installed. So he's moving it behind his back here, and then he's going to start moving this up again so that he can actually put the bottom portion into the pipe there you see on the, on the left-hand side of that mount. Now, all of this, again, is done with safety. We're slow and deliberate, uh, both the people on the ground and, of course, Thomas up on the tower. And now you can see Thomas has placed the antenna into that pipe fitting, and he's going to start tightening down those, uh, uh, those brackets to make sure that it's not going to go anywhere. And if you start comparing this antenna with other antennas we have on the tower, uh, not the dishes that you see there for internet, but uh, the Yaggies and the uh, Comet GP1s and 3s, and I think there's a diamond on there somewhere, uh, you can tell this antenna is the largest thing we've ever put on this tower. So here he's taping up the connector. You can see we've got uh, uh, the hardline connector connecting to an SO239. Uh, probably a 259 if I had to guess, uh, and taped up so that it will be protected from the elements. So now that we have the outside work done, we're going to move inside. The duplexer is already installed, so we're just now installing an amplifier. Yeah, they'll complain about non-linearity too. KD6FTR and AC4DM are doing their best to get this installed nice and level. I was going to run against the quarter. I said, no. You can Need a little bit of a gap between the duplexers and the amplifier there for the actual cables coming oh, off of that you. duplexer. Side, and Thomas is now installing one of the cables oh. yeah, that will go I to the amplifier. I hate those end connectors. Why do you do that? If you know what I mean? well, or possibly you know, like to, the, uh, to the repeater. We'll see in a moment. Now, those of you that have been around uh, uh, ham radio for a while, you can tell those duplexers are pretty small and short. In fact, we can install them in the rack horizontally. So this is going to be on the 70 centimeter band. Uh, I need four more screws. The cans you see to the left, next to Don over there to his left, are actually six meter cans that we're hoping to get back on the air very soon. And we're now installing the repeater and getting the cables routed to the inputs and outputs on the repeater as KD6FTR finalizes screwing it into the rack. <laughs> so there's the three elements that we need. And we'll do a quick Vanna White presentation. The duplexer's on top, the amplifier, and the Motorola.
These Motorola's were actually basically given to Thomas uh, because they were being replaced by X25 systems. So we're reusing these, or he's reusing these, to install DMR repeaters across the state of Kentucky. So we've pulled in a length of the hard line now into the shack in the new hole that uh, we drilled, plus we uh, put uh, the uh, PVC pipe there to make it uh, a good connection coming into the shack. And uh, Thomas is getting to work here stripping off some of this protective uh, coating off the hard line so that he gets uh, the bare copper, uh, corrugated copper, exposed for the connector he's about to install. Again, with these box cutters, you got to be really careful. And I'm sure he's done this a time or two. Now you can see that bare copper. There's part of the connector, and then here's the part that he's putting on to the uh, hard line uh, in preparation for installing the, uh, the other part of the connector. But before he does that, he's going to need to flare out some of that copper there that you see at the very end. That flaring will ensure that we get a good connection and good grounding. So he's taking his trusty screwdriver, and he's basically bending back parts of that copper uh, outer sleeve to make a good ground. And then we'll attach both of the uh, connector sections together. I had never seen one of these hardline connections ever put on. I've only worked with SO239 and 259 base connections, a few BNCs, and some N connectors. But to see this hardline put on, this type of connector, uh, was a, a good learning experience for not only me, but some of the others. I trust you, Brian. No matter what Brian says, I trust you. I don't trust him. Well, Brian has never been around long enough to see me sit and work that hard. Now we put on that other part of the connector, and you can see it's going to tighten down, plus we'll get some wrenches on that, and uh, we'll know if we'll have a good connection pretty soon. So that takes the hard line, that big, thick cable, down to a smaller end connector so how do that you can really see on the very end. And then Thomas puts the big squeeze, gets those two halves put together nice and tightly. Now you can see the end connector on the end. So we've gone from big hard line down to an end. KD6 FTR got out his laptop because once we get the repeater installed, cabled up, we're going to test it. So he's using his laptop to program a channel on his radio. And now we're connecting the hard line to the repeater. Technically to the duplexers, which then go to the repeater. And then that goes right here. Looking good. Gonna have to fill some of those gaps in there to keep the bugs out. And we powered on the Motorola XPR 8300. Again, this was equipment that uh, was basically given to Thomas, uh, being replaced by newer systems, I believe an X25 system. So we're reusing this. And we're double checking that we have a good internet connection, given that this is DMR. Coming up. And this would be yep. similar to what you would do we if you were setting up Wires X or okay. D-Star. Now, KD6 FTR is ready to test. Hey, E4GH, Rindyville, Kentucky, right outside of Fort Knox here, loud and clear, sir. I think I've worked you from McDonald's the other morning, but it's sounding good over here. It's probably good. <laughs> Hello, Mike. 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 Hello, She's working, sir. Yeah. And I I hate trying to program these yeah, from the front nine, panel, so, so I brought out the laptop. I didn't have a laptop. Phone, actually, and he hears you loud and clear over in Elizabeth Town, too. So you're, you're coming in good, sir. And, and thanks for the check the other morning. Uh, I know it was a little broken, but I was on the phone there. All right, I got to get back to my phone call. Thank you, D4G. So, folks, that's how we installed a DMR repeater at El Cara, and Thomas and Laura got together, uh, started putting their spool back together. We've got to get this loaded back up into the trailer. Of course, these two, this is what they do for a living. And uh, you can see uh, we rolled it. Uh, AC4DM had to get involved a little bit there, and uh, we're going to roll that back up into the trailer. And that wraps it up for the installation of a brand new, to us, DMR repeater at our main repeater site. 
Now, folks, how did this come about ultimately? Through relationships. And this is why a good club, an active club, building good relationships, you'll meet people, you'll find out about people's other projects. Thomas, in this case, reached out to us because he knew we were an active club. We had a great tower location to help fill in a gap for his DMR repeater ecosystem that he's putting together for the state of Kentucky. And uh, we're just proud to have him. And he joined our club. And Miss Laura there also was a big help. Get out there, join a club, help out with some of these types of activities, and enjoy the hobby. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4BDP Brian, 73.